Good morning, everyone. My name is Sal DiVincenzo, and welcome to the Entrepreneur's Toolkit. This particular program is Database Deep Dive. So today we're going to talk about some databases we usually don't talk about. Um, we tend to focus on our most popular databases, our most popular one right now uh, being Reference Solutions. Most of our patrons come down to um, access the database either in-house or from their home or office to create marketing lists, which uh, is what most small businesses want to do. They want potential customers. But today I'm going to show you some other databases that perhaps you haven't heard about, perhaps you have heard about, that might be helpful to you. Um, we're going to start off with a, a database that I particularly like using for, for a very specific purpose. And that is the Cole directory. And uh, we're going to get this accepted. OK. So what most people use the Cole directory for primarily is the reverse lookup capability. So if uh, there's a telephone number that you want to reverse lookup, uh, address to see who's living at, at, a, at a particular geographical location, uh, folks like to use this database, as well as searching for businesses. Now, what I like using this database for is actually, this is a common question that, that, that I'm asked is, you know, I want to call upon businesses that happen to be in a particular building. So when you have one building, usually it has one address for all the, all the businesses in that building. Is there a way for a small business owner who perhaps wants to call upon those businesses to get a listing of all the tenants in that building? And there is, and we use Cole directory to do that. So for example, I'm just going to uh, go to Google Maps here, just show you. The Hop Hog Industrial Park. We'll see it from space. Okay, there's a lot of buildings here. Okay, and for the purposes of the de this demonstration, I'm going to focus on this building here. There's two huge buildings here. Okay, and you can see even on on Google, they, they're not showing everybody here, but okay. I know that this building is 102 Vanderbilt Motor Parkway. There's multiple suites in here. Okay. So what I'm going to do with Cole is I'm going to do a search for that address, but I want to get everybody in that building. I want to get all of the tenants, all the businesses that happen to be in that building. And you can do that using this database. So you come to the directory. And we're going to scroll down here to this, enter the geographic criteria for your search. Now it says house numbers. We're going to look at um, the residential part of this in a moment. But right now we're going to do businesses. So for house number, uh, we're going to type in 102. We're going to type in a direction here. Uh, for street name, I'm actually just going to type in motor, the motor parkway. And state must be there. And for cities, we're going to do hop hog. And I'll might as well put in the zip code here as well. Okay, I think I have everything that I want for this that's going to work for this. So you're going to say list all, all of the records. Click on search. And hopefully this will work and the internet will be... Uh, cooperative this morning. And yes, it is. So as you can see here, this is a list of all the businesses inside that one location. This comes, this is very helpful, I think. Um, it comes in very, um, very handy. I also want to point something out here um, that a lot of folks might be excited about because it's a common, a common request, is that some of these uh, Listings come with the 
much sought after email addresses on the records. So this is a big deal for a lot of people. Now, uh, like I've mentioned in the past uh, with some of these databases, you do have to be in-house to access this database. It's not a problem. You just come down to uh, the center each building, for example, the Miller Business Center. If you're a Miller Business Center member, you just say I'm a member, we'll get you a day pass. You log on to one of our computers, uh, a librarian or information specialist will assist you in logging on to the database, and then you'll be able to log on and access this. Uh, this is downloadable, which is really cool. Uh, you can download this in multiple formats. You can even download this in the Avery 5160, the famous uh, envelope label format. And what, you know, this cold directory is primarily a mailing list database. So that's the reason why uh, that is available there, because folks will use this to create a mailers and whatnot. So these are businesses. You can contact them. You can reach out to them. Uh, if you do click on their record, you're just going to get basic information here. It's really not that uh, deep. If you want the more, the more deeper information, then you're definitely going to want to, you know, try one of our other databases that that the more popular databases that we talk about, which is, you know, Reference Solutions or Merchant Intellect. Okay, so that's the businesses. And perhaps you are a company that deals with consumers. So what we could do here is we're going to do an apartment complex. So I did before we got online here, I did a search for an apartment complex in uh, Ronkonkoma. And again, this is where this database comes in handy because, you know, an apartment complex is just going to have a simple address. You're not going to get all the apartment numbers, but let's say you want to send a mailing to everyone in that apartment. Obviously, you're going to need everybody's apartment number. Uh, let me just put this in here, the zip code. So we have just the house number. We don't have to do anything uh, else uh, crazy here. I do believe this is Ronkonkoma Avenue. So if you're wondering why it's Ronkonkoma, Ronkonkoma, that's the reason why. Hopefully I remember that correctly. Let me click on search. And again, you'll have everybody in that complex, their apartment number is listed here. Now, this might be a little scary to some of you. That's perfectly normal and fine. Uh, the fact that we have this information, I do want to mention something I, we, I, I, I like to mention this all the time. You know, none of these databases are connected to the FTC, Federal Trade Commission's do not call list. Uh, there is a, a law called the CAN Spam Act of 2000 regarding emails. You will see there are some emails here as well. Please, please do your due, due diligence when reaching out to these folks. Uh, and uh, make sure that you are uh, doing everything proper, that you can't really, um, you know, call. Now you'll notice there's not a lot of telephone numbers here, but there are, there are some and there are definitely emails here. So just keep, keep that in mind when you're uh, attempting to reach out to people. What most folks are doing with this, with this database is this, they're doing the, the Avery labels. They're doing a mass mailing. Um, and obviously, if you were a small business owner and had to pay for this, it would cost you potentially thousands of dollars for, for such a list. Uh, but as Miller Center members, as HIA members, as patrons of the library, or just a small business owner who wants to come down and, and join us uh, here at the center, uh, you have access to this at no charge. We pay for this. Okay. So... In addition to what I just showed you, and I don't want to go too deep because we, we have a limited amount of time. You can also search for businesses based on their business type as well. So it's very similar to the reference solutions uh, database and the merchant intellect database where you can search for businesses based on what type of business they are. But we primarily use this database 
for specific things for you know looking for all the tenants in a in an apartment complex all the tenants in a in a in a building so that in a nutshell is cold directory and you can access that by coming down to the center and asking for assistance and logging on uh, are there any questions i see uh, keith has his hand up is that on purpose keith or did you have a question okay you can please use the chat feature um, if you wish to uh, chat with us or ask a question. And I can come back just so you know if you, uh, if you want to come back uh, and ask a question at the end. Okay. So that is Cole Directory. Again, available to you in-house in, in the building at the Miller Business Center. Now, you're probably asking... How do I know if something is available off-site or on-site and so on and so forth? You come to our website here and you'll see uh, where it says select a database. Use that drop-down box there. You'll see a little star, a little asterisk here. That just means that that's in-house. In so you have to be here. Uh, either uh, you have to log on using a... Uh, a librarian to assist you to log on, or you just need to be in the building, it's IP recognition. If you click on the databases button, it'll tell you here, it'll say in library use only. Um, and then you'll be able to access that there. Okay, so we're done with uh, Cole for now. It doesn't look like there's any questions. I do want to move to a database that we do talk about from time to time, but I don't think we talk enough about it. And incidentally, this database is uh, maybe our number three most used database, um, which is a little shocking considering how powerful it is, especially if you're doing research on an industry or on a company or on your industry or on the competition, or if you just like reading um, business books and, and trade magazines and such, and just keeping on top of things. And that is Business Source Premier. You can see it on the screen here. Uh, Business Source Premier is kind of, it's kind of like a, uh, a fancy Google search in that you can search for articles, books, journals, even videos, you know, me multimedia. You can search for that here and unlike Google, where you kind of hit that dead end, where it's just like a little, little piece of it, uh, here you can get the full, the full information, the full deal. So you'll see it almost looks like a, like a Google type search engine. You got the search box here. We do have some search uh, options on the bottom. I always like to turn this this on right from the get go. This is the limit your results full search. Put a check mark there. Because whatever I search for here, I want to get the full article or the or the full book or the full uh, pay, paper. So if I want to maybe do a search uh, for, let's see, energy efficiency, I think right now, nowadays, everybody's thinking about this since things are so expensive. And click on that. And you can see as you type something, something will come up for you to... Um, kind of assist you like a tool tip. Okay, so here are the articles for energy efficiency. And I'm wondering why my, it's interesting. So they're supposed to be over here. Let's just do, supposed to be some refining tools. And I'm wondering if maybe there's a browser issue. So bear with me a moment. There they are. Hopefully you can see those tools now because you can see this database goes pretty far back, you know, you know 1934, you know, um, energy efficiency in 1934 is uh, much, much different than energy efficiency today. So I just want to, I'm going to change this, refine this to just the recent articles, the recent things about energy efficiency. So we're doing the last year or so. So you can see that's listed there. I can also, uh, drill this down to just showing results in sources of, you know, trade publications, 
uh, let's say magazines and academic journals. We don't want to do product reviews. We, we don't want to do uh, newspapers. So now these are the articles that I did a search for, for energy efficiency. And you can see where these are coming from here. This is coming from uh, Housing Finance International, uh, Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration News. It's been very warm out, so maybe we should look at this. Now, if I click on the link here to the article, it's gonna give me the abstract. Just basically a, um, a summary of what this is. It's an article, here's the subject, here's an abstract, who the author is. And what I can do is actually, actually click on this link here and see the article. There it is, I'm glad it rendered because sometimes it doesn't. Um, from the actual uh, publication, Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration News, as if I went somewhere and I copied it in color and here it is in PDF format. And I can read this article. I can download this article. I can uh, save this article, email it to myself. I can even create a folder on Google Drive and just dump anything that I search for today into that folder. You click here to sign in to create a free account after you've logged in using your Miller credentials uh, to save all these articles. And what some folks do is uh, they'll download this stuff and put it on their iPad or their tablet uh, to read it while they're on the go, or maybe print it out if it's an important article so they can highlight it, do what, what you want to do with it. But you see it's the ad actual article here. And not only that, but if you're interested in reading the rest of the May 23rd, 2022 issue of Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration News, you can. Because you can see here, these are the full contents of the issue. They break it up into sections here. So if I go to the next section, and maybe I want, maybe I want to read the top 30 HVACR uh, distributors of 2022, I can jump and see that. Nice things. It's even got all the ads that are in there. It's the, the actual, the actual uh, publication. Or perhaps I can click on choose another issue and see the back issues. Now, I will say what's nice about a lot of these, as you could see, they are the embargo on this is very, it's pretty short. I mean, this is, this probably is, you know, two weeks ago, this issue, maybe a week ago, even though the 18th, they come out like the week before, July 18th. And you can see here's the, uh, the art, this, these particular articles from this, uh, from this issue. So I know I picked something that's very uh, specific here, the um, air conditioning here for energy efficiency, but um, that doesn't mean that we don't have the big, the big magazines, the more mainstream magazines, because this is, uh, for example, an article in Time magazine that you can read. Uh, as you can see, it's the whole, the whole deal. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of times as small business owners, um, these little things add up like subscriptions to, to business magazines or, you know, entrepreneur magazine, or maybe a trade organization magazine, they can get, can get expensive, especially those, those trade magazines. You're looking at hundreds of dollars a year for some of those. So it's nice to be able to come here and, uh, for the lack of a better term, read the ebook or the, the, the electronic version of, of these things uh, and not have to pay for them. Now, in addition to over the 3,500, 4,000 publications that you have access to using this database, you can also uh, look up information on a company in the company's pro company profile section here. So now, not all companies are going to be in here. Just the bigger companies are going to be in here. Obviously, medium to larger size companies are going to be in here. And they are market line reports. And again, these are things that generally uh, would cost money to get done for you. 
you don't have to uh, pay for those. Um, I think we're kind of lucky that on this list here, 1-800-Flowers, which is a, technically a local company, Long Island company, they're right up front because they're one, the number one. Uh, but you can see, you can do a search for any company here. If it's available in the database, it'll come up and then you'll be able to download their market report, market line report. And that looks like this. Now, depending upon how big the company is and how much information it is, there is, uh, that's how big this report is. Some of these are going to be really short. This one in particular, I think, I, I do believe 1-800-Flowers is, is a... Um, is a uh, public company. So they will, uh, yes, they are a public company. So there's gonna be more information. Public companies obviously have to file with the SEC regarding uh, a lot of things. So you're going to have that information here. You get a company overview, you get the key facts, the business description, you'll get the history of the company. Uh, you'll even in some cases get the, the uh, Employee compensation on the C-suite. Here's the key employees. Sometimes you'll see their compensation information. And you'll get little biographies. Now, where this comes in handy is that perhaps you're going out to um, call upon these large companies. The SWOT analysis is very helpful. You want to call upon these large companies, and uh, you want to get the inside scoop on what they're doing, who you might be speaking to, what their biography is. Uh, there's no reason why as a small business owner, you can't go after the big fish. So it's always um, good to be prepared. It's also a great opportunity for you as a small business owner to see what threats and weaknesses a big company might have if perhaps you are a florist or you're thinking of expanding your floral business. Uh, you would come here to see what the bigger companies are dealing with, because obviously exponentially you're going to be dealing with that as well on a, on a different level. So it's always good to get that info. Um, and you can see these reports are, are long and thorough. And sometimes they'll have financial information here as well. So again, we were talking about a, uh, talking about a report that generally might be be a few hundred dollars um, that you'll have access to at no charge through the Miller Business Center. So this is Business Source Premier. Again, uh, a, a jewel in our crown of databases that we have here that not that many people uh, tend to use. So I'm just kind of pushing this here to, to let you know that it is here for you. Okay. Any questions so far about the databases that we've uh, that we've looked at. Just gonna wait here for the chat for a moment. And again, thank you for coming this morning. And we're gonna go to our next database. Now, a common question that we have from our patrons is, are there grants? Is there funding for uh, my business? Generally, <laughs> I hate to say, it, if you're a for-profit, generally not. Okay, there's loans that you could get from Small Business Administration from your local bank, and they're definitely lending, lending out. Um, but as far as uh, grants and funding regarding, um, you know, if you're doing a non-for-profit business or perhaps a business that's one of those key businesses that there's, there, there, you know, organizations are funding, uh, there's a, a a resource that we have here that is available in-house only. So you must come down to the center to access this, but it's free to access in the center. And that's foundation directory online. And this is not necessarily a place where you're going to apply for grants. This is not necessarily a place where you're going to see what's readily available today as far as grants. That's not to say that if there's a government grant here that you're not going to get a link to go through to apply for that grant because there are some of those here. Um, there is an, uh, there's a website, grants.gov, where you can apply for government grants. But the foundation directory is basically a, a means of you coming and researching who's giving money out, who's, who's granting funding, and also who's receiving funding as well. 
okay? Specifically in the areas that perhaps your business is, so the, 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 the industry, the demographic, the, the focus, and also companies or organizations, I should say, more, more correctly, organizations like yourself uh, that are receiving this money. So this is, this is meant for you to go to to research that. It is a research tool. It is not necessarily a place uh, you know, like eBay where you can just bid on a grant and, and fill out your information. So I want to point that out. So when you come here, I like to use the advanced search fil filters here because it's, it's very uh, user-friendly. So like, for example, here you have the subject area, what needs funding? Okay, so you click on this and then you'll get all these uh, potential choices here. And they're broken out into different things too. You can use the, you can either pick all of public safety or you could specifically pick, you know, legal services, safety information, fire prevention and control, that sort of thing. Social sciences, uh, law and uh, sociology, uh, sports and recreation, community recreation, sports, you can, you know, put this down here, get it really deep. Um, so we'll pick health right now and we'll, well, let's do holistic medicine. Let's do mental health care. And well, I think that's good to start. We'll start with that. Geographic focus, uh, where the funding will be used. You know, I, I, I like to choose New York. You can also choose a county if you wanted to. You can say New York, Suffolk County, or just Suffolk County, New York. It's up to you, depending upon how far you want to go. Uh, population served. So let's say you're focusing on you know specific things here. So maybe you want to uh, help uh, people with disabilities, people with diseases and Ill illnesses. Now I'm getting very specific here, so I might not get. I might not get things back here, um, I might actually uh, be shooting myself in the foot here with this, but we'll see what happens. Okay, there's some here. So there's 88 grant makers in the database. Again, these are not necessarily grant makers who are giving out grants today. This is just, these are people who have done this, okay? Uh, and there were 271 grants, 33 recipients, and there are tax forms here for you to look at, which is interesting, but you can see here that regarding holistic medicine, mental health care in Suffolk County, New York, geared towards people with disabilities or diseases, um, there is uh, over $33 million worth of grants that were given out. So you can see right up front here, we have someone super, super local in Patchog, the uh, Nap Sweezy Foundation. I can click on that foundation and get their information. Okay, so if I, this is what I do as a business, this is who I target as a business. This would be an organization that I would re reach out to, okay, for potential granting, for potential money and grants. That's that's what this database is basically for. It's 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 not necessarily where you're going to go and get the money right away. You're not going to go and apply for it, but it's a way of you now having that in and having that lead to know, you know, where that where the money is and where it's being given out and who's giving it out. And you can see here how they give their their funding where the funding is going, what the, the averages of how, how general, what the grants are generally, you could see here, it's between $10,000 and $50,000 is the average that they give. And then you can see, you know, commonly $5,000 and you can see who received those grants, okay? And what the recipient city is and what the amount was. And if you click on this, you can see more information about the recipient or more information on, about the grant. Okay, you see what their interests are. So perhaps you don't fall in that mental health care. You don't fall in that uh, that uh, category, but perhaps you fall in one of these other categories as well. Okay, uh, organization types, so on and so forth. And then, you know, you will have the contact information, uh, their location, their telephone number. Um, Sometimes there are email addresses here of the folks who work in those organizations, the grant makers. Uh, so this is another email uh, database, a database that has email information. 
So we just clicked on one of these. Um, for your information, you can also download these records as well. You can export them, email them to yourself. It's the usual uh, Microsoft Excel format. Comes in pretty handy uh, if you just want to have a list of things uh, to go over. And again, you can see here 33 recipients, and you can see who the recipients were. So if I click on the recipient, you're going to get the recipient information. Okay. And see where funders are located, how big the grants are, so on and so forth. So you kind of go back and forth with that and also see the financials too. Very informa very uh, interesting information for you to look up as well if, if you are going to apply for a grant. So again, if you happen to come across a government grant, and I'll jump in there really quickly, but the site is grants.gov. That's plural, grants.gov. And here you can apply online for federal grants, okay? And it's just a, a basic search criteria. You type in the search in here, you'll have, you'll have the grants. They'll say when it was posted, when it closes. Um, you can click on it, get a, uh, you know, get a, a, a deep information about it, a little more description of what it is who is eligible, what the closing dates are, and then you can just click apply and go for it. Or you can actually subscribe to it to see what's happening with it as well. Grants.gov is a free website. You can access it from anywhere. You don't have to be in-house for that. But like I said, I've been on foundation directory. I found a grant, I've clicked on it. It's gone to this website. So there, yes, technically there will be there will be grants that you can apply for through foundation directory, but it's only because they're one of these grants that are listed here that happen to be through the, the government. Okay. Any questions about foundation directory? Again, if you have a question, please use the chat feature. Uh, the chat feature will allow you to communicate with me. All right. Moving along, so it's, it's amazing. We've only done three in 36 minutes. I'm so sorry, but we, we have a couple more for you. You can see here. All right, I do wanna, let me go to this one. Jump around a little bit. LinkedIn Learning, okay? So uh, previously called lynda.com is now LinkedIn Learning. Yes, if you have a Miller Business Center membership or an HIA membership, if you're a patron of the Middle Country Library, you have access to this ridiculously deep and powerful uh, online learning resource. Um, if you are looking to better yourself with computer programming and coding, uh, with uh, Microsoft Excel, with Microsoft Word, with Access, you know, all the, all the Office 365 um, uh, suite, the Microsoft suite. If you're looking to uh, improve your your sales pitch or your marketing or if your customer service, perhaps you have employees that have, need assistance in customer service training, or you are a photographer and you or you want to be a, a professional photographer and you want to take uh, classes on uh, photography. Or perhaps you want to learn how to mix audio. It is all here. And these programs are long and thorough. So for example, if I want to, a uh, common one is Photoshop. So if I want to go to Photoshop, I want to learn more about Photoshop. So first of all, there's like 260 different videos on here, okay, programs. And you'll notice uh, this, is, this is full training here. If you want to become a graphic designer, this is a 26 hour program that you have access to at no charge through the Miller Business Center. That, that right there, if you're not taking advantage of just this database, I, I don't know what you're doing. Because this, even, even if you know this stuff, if you just want to brush up on your skills or if you just want to learn something new, this is here. It's uh, available to you. And how they do this is they do something, it's, it's called learning paths. Uh, which is basically it's the order of 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 <laughs> it's an order of uh, of the programs uh, of these classes. So you could see that there's different courses. You stay on that path. You take the different courses. You know, 
as short as two minutes as an introduction, as long as hours, you know, two hours, 23 minutes. You can, this one's five hours, six hours. You can um, start and stop just like a regular course, an online course, it's starting and stopping. Uh, what's nice about these uh, programs is uh, the way they break this down here, they chat, they have, they're in chapters and in sections. So like, for example, this part, this number one is going to talk about layout elements and you uh, composition principles. You can jump around here. And if it's something that perhaps you wanted to come back to, they have this cool bookmarking feature. So you can put a bookmark there, save all your bookmarks, and then come back to it later. So how this works is you first go to the Miller Business Center site uh, to um, create an account. So you do it through here. And then after you have an account, when you, when you come back here, you'll, your, all your information is going to be saved. So it's all under your account. So you're not losing your, your spot while you take th these courses. So, and, and like I said, there's everything here. Uh, if you want to get your drone, this is something I, I discovered <laughs> the other day. If you want to get your drone pilot license, evidently you have to take courses for that. So there's a certification prep course for the FAA 107 commercial drone license. Uh, this is a program. It's an hour and 51 minutes uh, to do that, to learn uh, how to become a drone pilot. Uh, or like I said, I mentioned before about coding. So, you know, HTML, CSS, you could see 74 courses on CSS. Uh, you want to do, uh, you know, Drupal, uh, WordPress. Uh, it's all here. It's all here. Um, create, I think even like if you do creative, uh, creative writing, oops, creative writing courses, you know, foundations of fiction. Crafting dynamic characters, discovering your story story style. It's all here. Take advantage of this, folks, because it, it's it's amazing. So again, this is LinkedIn Learning. You do have access to this with your membership. So um, if you run into any issues logging on, because sometimes it gets a little a little funny at that initial stage, just let us know. You can just reach out to us, and we'll we'll get you we'll get you started with that. Definitely take advantage of that. We don't talk about this as much as we should, and that's the reason why I want us to bring it up today. Okay. All right. Since this popped up, we'll talk about Statista. Statista is a database that is also only available here in-house. That being said, Statista does open up a lot of their charts uh, and uh, infographics to the public, but the, um, the dossiers and the, the more deeper reports that are available uh, here at Statista would only be available in-house. So again, you come down to the library. Statista does not require um, a login or password. So if you have your laptop or if you want to log on to one of our public computers, you'll do that. And it'll just go straight to the, to the, uh, to the database. And what we have used this for here uh, and what uh, patrons and members have used it for is pretty much you know, industry research, as well as it, this database really comes in handy if you're doing a presentation or a report or a business plan for your business and you need uh, the data and the metrics uh, for your specific industry or perhaps, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, a, you're, you're doing a, um, a report that requires that you present a trend that might be happening in an industry that you need to prove that, hey, this is the business that I'm in. I would like a loan, please, bank. And this is the proof that this business is viable because this is the trend that's happening. It's also a lot of Social media information, Internet of Things, Internet usage, cellular usage, you know, all those different typical things that people are asked in surveys is also here as well. So I'm going to just use one of these 
uh, pre, this is the trending ones here. So I know inflation is a, is a, is a, um, a big topic right now. So you can see here, when you come to the initial topic, it's going to give you just like an overview. You're going to have a lot of um, data here, but then you're going to get these great reports. Okay. And you're going to see uh, like charts that you can download and use, like I said, for your, for your things. So the global inf you know, inflation rate from 17 to um, 27, you can see, wow, this year is, this is it. This is the big, the big, the big year right in the center here for this. So this chart you can download as a PDF. You can download it in Excel format if you want to throw it into a, a spreadsheet, you know, PNG or the popular one is the PowerPoint because you're doing this for a PowerPoint program. It tells you where it's from, what the date was, and who did the survey. As well as there's an abstract here that pretty much explains what this what this statistic is showing. Okay. Now, the reports, which, like I said, are the ones that you have to be in-house to access, and this is what it looks like, are long. They're 55 pages long. Okay. And the report basically includes all of the, all of those um, charts. So you can see all these charts here. It includes all this stuff. It's, there's not a lot of um, narrative here. There is some. But it's mostly charts. It's mostly visual. Okay. So you're not going to get like the narrative of the, you know, paragraphs and paragraphs of data. It's mostly the charts and it's mostly for you to use again to insert into perhaps one of your reports that you're doing. Um, so, I mean, so for example, I'll do something a little lighter than inflation like candy. Okay. So we'll do candy brands. And we can see uh, sales of the leading hard sugar candy brands of the U.S. 2021. And you can see here who it is. It's Jolly Rancher, $132 million in sales. Good for them. Werther's Original, 100, Charms Blow Pop, Lifesaver, and just a private label. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff on here and a lot of serious stuff on here. Let's see what the most popular seasonal... Uh, Easter candy here is a uh, Reese's milk chocolate peanut butter eggs, 24%. Of the, that's the favorite. And the least was the hollow, hollow chocolate eggs because, well, yeah, it's just hollow. There's nothing, nothing fun about that, right? So you can so, kind of see that. And, you know, you can do smartphone users, users in the United States. You, can, you kind of get the idea here what, what we're looking at. Okay, so you could see an increase here in that, obviously. And then you have these infographics. You know, do you remember um, USA Today was like the first who really like made these popular, all these infographics. Um, these are just stuff that's very trending right now. Countries with the most active volcanoes. The world's highest grossing company. And what's nice is that you, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to take this and insert it uh, in your report, or if you have a social networking feed, as long as you reference, and you'll see the they'll 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 tell you what the um, you know what the the rules are for for sharing this. Um, there's FAQs here, which which will explain how it works, but they do let you share it as long as you you go back to Statista and, and say this is this is where it's from. Uh, but you can insert this, uh, perhaps you have a um, social media presence for your business and you want to maybe post an infographic uh, to make people, you know, for, for someone that might be interested in, uh, in what you do, uh, you, can have, you can have that posted on, your, on your, uh, your Twitter feed, for example. You can see the world's highest grossing companies, uh, Walmart. Retail, and Amazon e-commerce. So that is Statista. We only have time for a couple more. So are there any questions regarding this? You see, there is someone with their hand up. Robert, uh, is that, did you meant, mean to do that? Or 
If you have a question, please use the chat feature. And you just click on the chat button and just start typing. Make sure you say to everyone. And I will also put my contact information in the, uh, in the chat as well. So if you have any additional questions or you want to go deeper, you can reach out to me or to one of my uh, colleagues here at the Miller Business Center. Here's my email and my phone number. And if you wish to reach out to me, if you have any other additional questions, I'd be happy to help you offline. So moving on, we have two more I want to talk about. The first one is Uniworld Online. This is a fairly new database for us. Uh, so we haven't really talked about it too much, but we're kind of excited about it because one of the common questions that we get here at the center is, do you have a database that will show me uh, companies that either do business overseas or are owned by an overseas company that does business here? And uh, can you tell me what, you know, where those subsidiaries are located and what they might be, you know, what they might be uh, called? Because you know, there could be a company in, in Europe or in, you know, for, like, for example, in the United Kingdom, in the UK, they're called, you know, ASCD uh, Corporation Limited. And here they're actually called something else, but they're owned by ACSD or whatever I just said. So, uh, yeah. So that's Uniworld and Uniworld allows us to do that. And also uh, what's great is we can also search for the products, perhaps like the brand name to find out who the parent company is. Because I, you know, I personally, like for example, I like to bring this up. So uh, PepsiCo, right? So I could do a keyword search. It's a company search here for PepsiCo. And I'm gonna just say the parent company is PepsiCo. So PepsiCo, obviously Pepsi. So you can see there's uh, 112 records found and we can take a look at that. And I was uh, surprised to see uh, who PepsiCo owns. Like for example here, uh, Frito-Lay North America. I kind of got the idea that I kind of knew that they, they owned it, but I, I wasn't quite sure. But you could see here, so here's the, the main address and information for, for Frito-Lay North America and all the domestic subsidiaries and all the foreign subsidiaries as well. Okay, so here's PepsiCo. And now this is the main uh, listing here for PepsiCo. So you can see they, do, they, they own Frito-Lay, Gatorade, the bottling companies. Uh, they have other main sections there, like Quaker Oats. That I did not know. I did not know that Pepsi owns Quaker Oats or Tropicana for that matter. So that was new for me. Uh, and also foreign subsidiaries. So if you happen to be in England, they own the Capella Fruit Juices Company. Uh, they own, let's see who else here. What else is uh, Lipton in Switzerland is PepsiCo. So it's pretty, actually pretty interesting. Uh, I, again, I had no idea that SodaStream, I knew that SodaStream was an Israeli company. I had no idea that they were taken, they were bought by PepsiCo. So SodaStream, if you make your own soda, uh, Suntory Holdings, the Quaker Oats company, you kind of get the idea here. It's really neat to, uh, see what these companies own besides what you usually would think they would own Pepsi, right? But this is another place where this database is powerful. And this, like I said, is where most folks were interested in. And this is why we got this database in the first place. So search for parent companies headquartered. So if you're looking for a parent company, perhaps, that has a headquarters in, I'll pick Italy. All right, so Italy, and then they have subsidiary. So it's an Italian company with a subsidiary here in the United States, which is what most people are asking us for, is I want a foreign company that owns here or vice versa, a U.S. company that has subsidiaries in the country. 
So that's this list. Okay. So you could see this company, 3V Tech SPA, um, this is where they're located in uh, Bergamo. Uh, they are 3V Tech US, USA. <laughs> that wasn't very uh, exciting. Uh, I was hoping for maybe something a little different, but uh, you kind of get the idea here. So this is the Italian company, the Italian parent company, and this is the foreign subsidiary. So, okay, so here's one that, that kind of makes sense of what I was kind of going for. So the Ali Group SPA, uh, located in Milan, one of their companies here in the United States is Aladdin Temperite LLC, huh, Tennessee, say Beverage Air Corporation in Winston-Salem. Uh, Isomatic Incorporated in Denver. Okay, so you can kind of see uh, the where the companies are connected. Artsana, I think a, lo a lot of us have heard of Artsana. Um, so you can see uh, they're also the Boppy Company. You know, if you get a car seat, uh, you know it's it's an Artsana car seat for your for your kid for your baby. Um, this I knew about, so auto grill SPA. So auto grill is kind of like the, the roadside little restaurants and whatnot, you know, company 1977, Milano, Italy, uh, you know, who are our, uh, roadside folks. You'll, you'll notice this. If you go to like one of the, if you're on the throughway and you pull over side, it's usually owned by or run by HMS host corporation. So here's the link for HMS, but it is, it is auto grill. It's an Italian company. So you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about here. Uh, very neat to see, very important if you're looking to do business uh, with foreign companies or if you are want a U.S. company that does business in a foreign country, this is the place to go. It is um, Uniworld Online. Okay. And I do believe that that is also in library use only. Okay, so you do have to be here, but you can spend all your time here if you like uh, to um, to browse this database. And again, I don't have the time to go too deep with it. You can contact me if you want to, but uh, you can also search for specific types of companies um, that you're looking for. So you don't just have to say, you know, Italian foreign parent U.S. company. You can say Italian foreign parent U.S. company that does baby products and then just get that those companies there. You can also look for companies in your specific area if you're looking for a specific zip code. So if you want to add like the Hophog zip code there, you can see Italian-owned companies that have subsidiaries here in Hophog. So it's a powerful database. It's really, it's really a great, great database. And again, download, yes, you can download uh, data in uh, PDF or Excel format. So once again, I did record this, uh, I did record this uh, program today. We'll try to get it up on our YouTube channel as soon as possible. You can watch it back. If you do not have a Miller Center membership, uh, it's absolutely free to do so. You just need to come down to our, um, our branch in Center Reach, 101 Eastwood Boulevard with your local library card. So if you are a, uh, we definitely need you to have a library card. We're all librarians here, that's, that's the first rule. You have to have a library card. Get your library card, bring it down to us, and fill out a couple forms. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. You're good to go. You'll get a Miller Center membership. You'll be able to access the majority of the databases off site. Great databases like Reference USA, Emergent Intellect, Business Source Premier, First Research, Dun and Bradstreet, Hoover's, all that good stuff. Uh, no catch, no charge. Uh, we just want you to be successful. Okay, any other questions, comments, suggestions? Okay, folks, that looks like it. I thank you so much for attending this morning's program. If you wanna see our other programs that we've done in the past, all of them, we have over a hundred. You definitely need to check out our YouTube channel. It's just youtube.com forward slash Miller Business Center. And we will be happy uh, to put anything up there as well. So, you know, if there's a program that you might have a suggestion for, uh, just reach out to us, uh, email me, and we'll be happy to put it up 
on our YouTube channel. We do these little tutorials like I just did now. We can make one for you, put it up there, kind of like a little introduction to a database, a little 10 minute thing that we could do as well. So if there's a particular database that you see on our list that you want us to go over, email us and we will do a little tutorial and put it on our YouTube channel. So, so thank you so much for coming. Uh, I appreciate it very much. And if there's no other questions, we will see you all next time.